Hi, it's Babette from Digital Noir here. I'm just going to go over some of the details um, that are involved with sending and shipping products through the WooCommerce plugin. So first of all, before we start getting into the nitty gritty of how to set things and how to actually apply the shipping charges, what we really want to think about is our products themselves. So we want to do a bit of research into how much it's going to cost to ship the products we want to send, how far are we going to send them. We also kind of want to think about practical things like how many items can I fit into one of these shipping boxes? What am I going to make the flat rate for shipping? So once we've answered those basic questions um, that really just come down to how you want to arrange the business, then we can start moving into deciding on what that's going to be. So questions about weight and size will definitely come up. So we want to be figuring out the answers to those questions before we start delving in and putting in the data into our site. It's good to have a look around and decide who you're going to do your shipping with, how much, find out from them how much it's going to cost to ship, say, one item that's going to weigh 20 kilos or if it's going to cost to send something that's the same size but it's only going to weigh five kilos. So there's going to be a lot of variables and we want to know what those charges are before we start going into detail and putting in all the information. So make sure we do our groundwork first and then we can dive into this. A nice easy way to knock your shipping prices on the head is to go to products and shipping classes. So in here you can see it's very similar to a category page. This is where we're going to name the shipping class and then we're going to put it in a description. You don't necessarily have to put it in a description if your title is succinct enough. So we could say for example small items add new shipping class and then it appears here. We might also have large equipment. And then we might just have clothing. So we want to keep them fairly simple. We don't want to get too complicated with it because then when, when we're actually putting them into categories, we don't want to get confused. So now if we return to products and we go into one of our items you can see that under product data under the shipping tab on the left we have the options of our shipping classes so let's have a look at what we've got it's a netball bag considered a small item. So now we're able to select and change what kind of shipping class we have. Therefore we can decide upon what it's going to cost to ship each item. So let's jump into setting the prices and the settings for shipping. If we go into WooCommerce and then we click settings it will then bring up the general settings page. If we then click on shipping, it will bring the settings specifically just for our shipping. Now, there's a few different built-in rates that are on WooCommerce already. So we've got flat rate, free shipping, international delivery, local delivery, and local pickup. If we look at the shipping options from the top, we've got enable shipping, you would simply uncheck this if you were selling like a digital product and you didn't require the shipping. If that was the case, then you'd also want to untick this one, shipping the oh, sorry, enable the shipping calculator on the cart page. So if we were sending a digital product and didn't need the shipping calculator, we wouldn't want the calculator on the cart page. In this case, we are shipping a product, so we do want to have the calculator on the cart page. 
Hard shipping costs is probably a good idea to have ticked as it will allow you to calculate the cost of the shipping once we actually have the address. This just stops the customer from getting a surprise when they think they're going to be charged one set of shipping fees and then they put in their address and we discover it's going to be something else. So it's good to hide the shipping costs until the address is entered and we secure where it's going to be sent. Further down we've got the shipping display mode. So this is just simply deciding whether or not we want to display all our different shipping options. If we have got many different shipping options then we might want to display shipping methods in a drop down but it's probably okay for this one just to have shipping methods with the radio buttons. A little bit further down we've got shipping destination. So the first one we have here is default to shipping address. This one is handy because if we select this one it means that the customer doesn't necessarily have to write their address in twice so they're not going to have a shipping address and then a billing address also. It just means they can put in their shipping address and then they'll have a tick box to be able to add in a separate billing address if they want to. If we wanted to do default to billing address then we would have to put in a billing address each time. The last option is only ship to user's billing address. This is probably not recommended as some people do need to put in a separate billing address. A lot of people have PO boxes and things like that. So we'll put default to shipping address at the moment and then if they want to they can put in their billing address. And let's have a look at shipping methods. We can choose here which one is going to be our default shipping method. We can also see which one is going to be enabled. So if we go into we can see at the moment free shipping is the only enabled shipping option that we have. At the top here we can actually go and edit those shipping options. So say we want to enable a flat rate and choose the specifications for that one. We just tick the box that says enable this shipping method. We want to call it flat rate. We want to choose the countries that it's allowed in, which is probably a good idea considering we don't want to do a flat rate over to America. We'll have it as taxable. Now, this is where we get to choose whether or not we want to use the shipping classes. So, per class, charge shipping for each shipping class in an order. That's why we want to select the shipping class. So we can add a cost, clothing. So we can choose how much clothing is going to cost as a flat rate. Maybe you want that one to be $10. Maybe you want a handling fee of $5. Add another one, large equipment. Maybe that's going to cost $50 and a handling fee of and then the last one just small items that might cost ten dollars with a handling fee of ten for example now I don't actually know if these details are correct I'm just popping them in there we will put that information in once we actually know what we are going to charge our customers so as I said we do want to do our foreground work before we decide what our costs, is going to, costs are going to be for shipping and handling So then we move on and we save those changes. Then we go to free shipping. Now you might think, mm, why would I really want to ship for free to anyone? It's going to cost me money, therefore they should pay for it. That's true, but just in case you want to, we may have a time when you go, all right, I'm going to put on a special where people can come and spend $50 minimum and then they can ship for free. So then we can write a minimum order amount defined below and then we would define the minimum order. There's also a minimum order amount or a coupon. So people may want to have a minimum order amount or a coupon. They could have a coupon for free shipping just on that particular item. Or they can have a minimum order amount and a coupon. So they would need to spend, say, $20 and then they get free shipping with a coupon number. 
they can also just simply have a free shipping coupon. That's probably the only time you're really going to enable free shipping. So we'll untick that for now. And we'll save changes. Then we'll move on to international delivery. If we were going to do international delivery, we'd want to enable it. We'd keep it probably called international delivery. We'd select the country that we want to have it in, or we can even exclude the country that we don't want it to be sent to. So we can send it to every country but India or something like that. Then we want to add in, again, per class shipping, charge shipping for each shipping class in an order. And we put in the cost, the handling fee, and the minimum fee. I'm not adding that one in, so we haven't enabled that. If we move on to local delivery, you'll see we have more specific delivery options. So if we were to enable local delivery, just make sure that you are specifying zip codes that is considered local to you or to the area that the, the product's being shipped from. Because we certainly don't want to be sending, um, giving people the option for local delivery if they're going to be ordering from the other side of the country or overseas. Then we've got local pickup. Now, if we are going to allow people to pick up, make sure we have a business address. We don't really want people coming to our personal homes to be picking things up. And again, we want to specify the postcode for that area. Most of the time, I imagine you use a flat rate and then you will do things like adding in specific shipping classes so that you can break things down into different, um, different areas of cost. So from here, that's where we'd go back to our product. Go into our netball bag. And then set the shipping class. Update. And then And then, when we go in to add it to our cart, Then we enter in our details. We'll see that shipping is going to cost us $30 for that item. So it's a total of $40. Now, I realise that that's an unrealistic shipping rate for something that costs $10, but that's just because I just put in dummy shipping costs. So I'll just reiterate make sure you go and discover what your shipping costs are going to cost you before you go in and you add in how much it's going to cost the customer. It's just really important to do the research before you start charging people for things. You don't want to undercharge them because then you foot the bill, but you don't want to overcharge them because then they'll get angry. <laughs> if you need any further advice, don't be afraid to call us or email us at Digital Noir. Thank you.